Coleman, it's so good to speak to you. You too. You, so good to speak to you. You are just having the most amazing time at the moment. I feel like we've seen you in so much stuff and I feel it's about time as well. Um, but obviously, let's talk about The Walking Dead first because this is a massive show in itself and I know people are so very much looking forward to the second part of season six. I know you'd previously said that, that season three was your favourite, so how how do you think that season six is kind of measuring up to that? Because it's, it's very different, it's like an anthology, kind of. It is, it's very much an anthology and I think that it's, um, it's really uh, probably as dynamic as season three was. I think season three has always been my favorite because I feel like we were sort of uh, playing around with the form of television and how story unfolds. And I think that we're being that bold again. I think the character, because I think it's all, it's always character driven. So it just makes sense that things should break apart and the characters should explore some of the territory. And uh, this anthologized, um, I don't know, experience of it uh, makes it even more dynamic. And I think characters are really being bold about who they are and redefining themselves in a really unique way. Your character has always been one of the most interesting though. And people, it, he just constantly keeps people guessing, Strand. Right. And what of you was meant to think going into this second half of the season? Because people just don't know whether to trust him. And some people are like, you should learn, you can never trust Strand. <laughs> um, but we just don't know if he's deep undercover or whether he's just getting used to Virginia's way of rule like what have you been to think I like the idea that you never know where you stand with Strand oh that's a great way uh, to put it I never I like that because I like that he's always a little wily and um, precarious and you never know how to take him to take him sincerely or does he have a plan B C, D, E, F, G. And I think he's all of those things. I think there are times when he's completely sincere and forthright, and there are times when he's being Cajun, withholding information. And I think that's what makes him such an interesting character, and I love playing him. I think that's why playing him for the past seven seasons, well, it will be seven seasons, uh, well, is pretty awesome. I just love how he keeps changing and growing. I was gonna say though, how does it feel being one of those last remaining characters who's been in it from, you know, season one. Uh, it feels really, really good, actually. Um, I think it's amazing to me that a character like Strand continues to thrive, but I think I understand why, because he has such a, um, his moral compass is very askew. And I think that's very interesting to people and to viewers. And there's a lot of story there. So I think that's why he's still surviving. Um, of course, it also feels bittersweet because, you know, I started this show with, pe you know, these people who I love so dearly and they become family to me and we're still in each other's lives. But um, it's strange. It starts to mimic the apocalypse. When you're losing people, you're literally losing people. You know, it's not, not only Strand, but it's also Coleman. I'm missing my, my comrades and co-workers and you have to open yourself up to new people and new experiences. So it does, it does mirror one another at times, to be honest. Sometimes the difficult part that a character's having is actually probably a difficult part that Coleman's having with like, oh, it's, I remember when we moved to Texas, it was a little shift. You had to rethink where were you and who were you and your operating systems and the, and the people around you. And so it was a little, it's a little tough, you know, not everything is just smooth, but you go with it and you try to make the best of it like you would <laughs> in the apocalypse. <laughs> Oh God, I really hope the apocalypse isn't coming anytime soon. And no, it, well, well the, we've soon. been through a bit of a, an apocalypse, it seems, and <laughs> already. We but, one, but we're okay. We're getting through it, and there've been no zombies, which is uh, which yes. is the main thing. Thank God, I just got my vaccine, so hopefully, you know, <laughs> I won't turn into a zombie either. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are your survival instincts like, though? We've seen. Strand survive all this time. What is you as Coleman? What are your survival oh, Melissa. like? I think they're pretty <laughs> awesome because I realized that even when the, uh, in the beginning of the pandemic, how sort of um, pragmatic I am and how very calm I get. And I really just, you know, order the things that I, ne I need. I start looking at my resources. I remember I was, um, I was in, um, I was in Texas a while ago and we, you know, there was something going on with lighting and heating and things like that. And I knew that I was able to get my resources together pretty quickly and really look at like, oh, if I need to ration food, you name it. Yeah, 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 you know what I mean? So I feel like you just never know. 
So I feel like I feel like I'm always equipped with it, you know. I don't know why, but I feel like it is the show that's really sort of like had an impact on me. And just say, oh, I can go anytime I go into a hotel room, I immediately go into you know the mini bar and I look at my what what do I have there? What do I need? <laughs> How long will this last? <laughs> oh, I love that. This show has served you well, and clearly you're the person who I want to be around if a oh. zombie apocalypse. Come oh, our way. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, but like I said, we have seen you in so much stuff, like Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. Euphoria, um, you've done a Field Street could talk. Like, common. I like I said, I'm so glad that we're seeing more Thank of you. you. And also with a, a name like Common Domingo, you were just always destined to be a star, I feel. I I <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I, I guess so. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. Um, and we're gonna see, <laughs> we're gonna see more like Zola's coming up, which I know people are very excited about because that's a huge like Twitter thread viral yeah. thing. Um, and then Candyman as well, which I know Jordan Peele wrote the role for you. How does it make you feel that people are writing roles for you? Like you are in their head when they are creating these amazing. And Jordan Peele is a master filmmaker. What's mm. that like? You know what I think? You know what? It's that's a great question. It's really humbling, and it's really um, it's truly you feel useful and purposeful because you like people can actually see what you can do, and people write towards your strengths. Um, that's been the blessing lately because you know I have now amassed a body of work which uh, spans over thirty years, and so people now have some idea of the places that I'm willing to go, and so usually people when they, they know they want an actor who's willing to go to these really weird, dark, interesting, funny, heartfelt places, call on Coleman Domingo or write it for me. So it feels great to be in that moment that people recognize my work and they're writing work for me. I, I feel truly blessed. Is there something that hasn't come away yet that you would really like to do? Like if we can plant that seed in someone's head, is there something, because like you say, you've done a lot of, you've done a lot of stuff, but there must be something still, right? Yeah, I want to play a super villain in like Marvel <laughs> or DC. Yeah, I want to play a super villain. I want to Not play someone. You don't want to be the hero. Oh no, the heroes are boring. I want to be. I want to be a villain. I want to be a villain. I, you know, it's like Earth Kid said. I want to be evil. <laughs> Evil's more fun to play. It's more fun and detailed. I don't know why, but it is. Oh my god! I, I mean, I can see it. I could see that you would you would play it like as you've done with Strand so well. I feel there's just a lot uh, a lot more that that's going to come. Um, shows like this create so much discussion. Do you ever go and read them to see how accurate people are and be like, ah, you were totally wrong? <laughs> you know, it's funny. Every so often, they sort of breeze my way. I may it may pop up on Twitter or something like that, and I always laugh because uh, sometimes people are they're they're on in some way they um they just do the math of the series in some way and they're like oh well this makes sense this will make sense with the writing a lot of times they're very off but and it's funny because the thing that they've been off about the most is oh strand's gonna die this season strand's gonna die this season it's been every season every season strand's gonna die he's definitely gonna die this episode he's gonna die and they're like I'm like your fan theories are kind of off you guys i'm still here <laughs> how long would you love to see you Fear the Walking Dead continue. Some shows go on for years and years and years, and then some may stop when it's at the height of like mm. its, you know, its peak. What would you like to see for Fear the Walking Dead? I would like to see Fear the Walking Dead end when it's, I think, at its peak. To be honest, I mean, I think, I don't know, I don't know. Like, I'm not trying to take myself out of a job, but I think we're in a great place right now. <laughs> but I also think that it's. It's, I think it's just great fun when you just like, when you ascend and ascend and ascend and you know that there's no, when you know that there's no more story to tell, that you've blown up every building, you've gone through every character's uh, emotional arc, then it's time to wrap it up. You know, I think that's a healthy thing. Some shows will stay on and just be straggling to the finish line like a, like a zombie. We don't want that, you know, or a walker. We don't want that. We want it to end on a high note. And, um, but hopefully the high note can last many, many seasons. You never know. I think as long as that there's more story. You know? This show has just done amazing things. And I feel like you must feel the same, right, for you? It's done amazing uh, things for you. It, it has, because, you know, I think, I think it's really, being a part of this um, global show 
has brought many more eyes on my career, the things that I care about. I think, you know, I've been able to go around the world and meet many people who are connected to the show, who just always want a hug and want to be connected. And that's also part of the joy. That's also part of the things that I miss. I miss getting out there and um, <clears throat> usually we would be out at some point going to London or going to Brazil or somewhere and really engaging with fans. And I think that's also, that's one of the things, the highlights that I love about the show is how connected it, it makes all of us, you know? So um, yeah, that's the thing I really enjoy. I miss hugs as well. So um, bring your hugs over here when you manage to make it over to London. <laughs> through, through the three. Um, thank you so much. Good luck with the second part of the season, of course, but good luck with everything else. Um, thank you, Marissa. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Take care. You take care too. Bye-bye.